Hello everybody. In this lesson, we will talk about stationary points. Remember, differentiation tells us how the slope of a graph changes. For example, if we have a function which is equal to x squared plus 4, then f prime of x is just going to be equal to 2x plus 0, which is 2x. Then f prime of a 2 is going to be 2 multiplied by 2, which is equal to 4. So the question is, what does this 4 mean? It simply implies that the slope or gradient of f of x at x equal to 2 is 4. In other words, differentiation of basic functions at a particular point gives us the slope of that function at, a, at that particular point. Um, <clears throat> if we look at a function like this, Let's say we have a function like this. It's an interesting function. Just by observation, you will notice a couple of interesting things. You have point A, you have point B, and you have point C. Now, what do you notice? The first thing that you will notice is that the sign, the slope changes at A, B, and C. At A, the slope initially is positive, it changes to become negative. At C, it changes from negative, negative. And at B, it's initially negative, then it changes to be positive. Here, A is a maximum turning point, B is a minimum turning point, and C is what you call a point of inflation. In physics, turning points play an important role. Therefore, identifying turning points is important. Differentiation offers us a technique, a very simple technique, that helps us to identify turning points of a given function. One thing we know is that at A, B, and C, the slope of the graph is zero. What that means is that the slope of the graph at A is equal to zero. This is the slope of the graph at A. The slope of the graph at B is equal to zero. And the slope of the graph at C is equal to zero. So how do we distinguish A from B using the methods of integration? If the second derivative of the curve at A is less than zero, then it means that A is a maximum turning point. On the other hand, if the second derivative of X is greater than zero, it means that A is a minimum turning point. Sorry, this is B. And here, if the second derivative is equal to zero at that particular point, it means that that point is a point of inflation. Let me distinguish that again. A max, at a maximum turning point, the gradient is zero. In other words, both the first, the first derivative is zero. The second derivative is less than zero. 
at a minimum turning point, the first derivative is zero, the second derivative is actually greater than zero. At a point of inflation, the first derivative is zero, and the second derivative is actually also zero. Let me do an example. Let's say we have a function f of x equal to x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. Our task is to calculate, to determine if this graph, what turning points do this graph have? So let's start by looking at f prime of x. This is equal to two, sorry, three x squared plus six x plus three. This is the same as three bracket x squared plus two x plus one. What do we know? We know that at turning points, f prime of x is equal to zero. This would mean that x squared plus 2x plus 1 will be equal to zero. So we have to solve this quadratic equation. And one way of rewriting this is x squared plus x plus x plus 1 is equal to zero. You see that x is common there, so we can actually factorize that out. So this is x, x plus 1, plus x plus 1, all equal to 0. x plus 1 is common, so you have here x plus 1, x plus 1 is equal to 0. What that means is that x is equal to minus 1. Hence, we know that there is a turning point at x equal to minus 1. But at this particular point, we cannot tell if the turning point is a maximum turning point or a minimum turning point or a point of inflation. For us to be able to determine if that particular point is a maximum turning point or a minimum turning point, we need to calculate its second derivative. So we have here f double prime of x will be equal to 6x plus 9x plus 3. So at this particular point, we are going to find out if the second derivative will be positive when we knock in this negative x at that point. If we calculate f negative 1, that will give us 6, negative 1, plus 9, negative 1, plus 3. This is negative 6, negative 9, plus 3. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3, negative 9 will give us negative 12. So what do we conclude? We have seen that at x equal to negative 1, f prime of x is equal to 0, and f, prime, f double prime of x is less than 0. That means that the point x equal to negative 1 is what we call a maximum turning point. It's what we call a maximum turning point. Let's do an example again. So if we have f of x equal to 3x squared plus x plus 1. So let's calculate the turning point in this graph. So f sub prime 
x is 6x plus 1. And if we equate that to 0, this would mean that x is equal to negative 1 over 6. Now, f double prime of x is equal to 6, which is greater than 0. So what do we what have we seen here? f prime of x is equal to 0 at x equal to negative 1 over 6 and f double prime of x is greater than 0 irrespective of the value of x. That means that this particular point right here is a minimum turning point. is a minimum turning point. 